was given a, a, a sentence. He did a free show for children, crippled children, in Central Park. He crossed the pond, if you would. And Philippe and I became very good friends. <laughs> The World Trade Center stood for 23 years without serious incident. Apart from a few small office fires and the odd jammed elevator, the buildings led an uneventful existence. Gradually, the floors began to fill up. Numbers 1 and 2 World Trade Center, as the towers were officially called, began to worm their way into the hearts of New Yorkers. time the terrible events of September 11th happened, I think most people had actually made a piece with the Trade Center as a piece of architecture. They may not have loved it, but they liked it. They saw it as a benign presence, as part of the landscape of New York, and expected and counted on seeing it forever. The first terrorist attack on the towers took place on February the 26th, 1993. A rented van packed with hydrogen canisters and the equivalent of half a ton of dynamite was driven into the garage beneath the complex. Although they had no access inside the towers themselves, the terrorists got as close as they could, parking the van two floors down six feet from the subterranean south wall of the North Tower. At 18 minutes past 12, the bomb exploded. Six people were killed and 1,042 injured in what was, at that time, the biggest terrorist attack ever carried out on American soil. The towers acted like giant chimneys, sucking smoke from the blast upwards through the stairwells and elevator shafts, which were full of people trying to get out. The intention had been to demolish the base of the North Tower and cause it to fall into the South. But the terrorists had not anticipated the extraordinary strength of this tube of steel. The bomb, the bomb was a serious bomb. <laughs> but in terms of, of a building of the scale of the World Trade Center, it was not a significant event in terms of the tower. Now, outside of the tower, it was another matter completely. The bomb failed to demolish the towers because it exploded outside the perimeter wall. The blast merely bounced off and shattered several floors of the parking garage and a machinery space below. The next time the terrorists attacked, the outcome would be different because eight years later, they finally managed to penetrate the tower's defenses. From this point on, the building's design meant that the collapse was inevitable. For the third year in a row, IntelliJoyce has ranked Honda as having the best certified used car program, proving again and again and again, that it may be used, but it's still a Honda. For a limited time, get special APR financing as low as 5.9% for up to 60 months on all Honda certified used cars. Hey, where are you off to? Some conference in Cleveland. Oh yeah, who with? With Cooper. Cooper. Huh. Who's not
money on this plane. This guy. <laughs> How much do you make? Drink. <laughs> because it's not as much as I make, I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> sort by shortest flights. Another way Expedia makes it easy to find the trip you're looking for. Expedia.com. Discover your inner Lewis and Clark. Go RV. Life's a trip. Visit an RV dealer or call for a free video. Sunday. A mysterious explosion sinks a Russian sub. Cold War suspicions run deep. Must be the result of a collision between two submarines. Failed in a, a very catastrophic manner. The effects were absolutely devastating. It's a true story. A horrible way to die. A year of secrecy is unveiled in one hour. The Kursk Disaster at Sea, Sunday at 9 on TLC. Sponsored by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Brown makes me feel powerful. Brown lets me be everywhere all at once. Brown software connects me to my suppliers. It connects me to my customers. Brown brings me my raw materials. Brown delivers my finished goods. I trust Brown. Other colors may be cute, but they don't call you back. Making business more efficient. What can Brown do for you? America is the land of the free and home of the brave. I'm proud to be an American, and uh, that's what it's all about, you know? You know, America has always been the symbol of freedom and patriotism. The American dream is alive, more now than ever. Building the impossible comes to TLC. The challenge, reconstruct a submarine invented nearly 400 years ago. Tricky. Will it sink or swim? Building the impossible, the first submarine, Monday at 10 on TLC. This program contains material that may be disturbing to some viewers. Parental discretion is advised. When the first 200-ton airliner smashed into the World Trade Center, traveling at over 400 miles an hour, it seemed that the building had survived the attack. But in fact, serious damage had occurred inside cutting off vital escape routes and initiating the process by which the towers fell. Naval architect George Slay was at his desk on the 91st floor of the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. I was on the phone, I heard a roar, looked out the window and saw uh, this passenger jet coming towards the building. Uh, it was only about two or three plane lengths away from me at that point, and I didn't really have time to react. It was just, uh, I saw it, and then it was into the building. George's office was just below the point at which nearly 200 tons of Boeing 767 had struck the tower. Our offices of between the two arrowheads, and my office was particularly to the first three windows to the right of this arrowhead in this area here. It doesn't get much closer than that. My office kind of collapsed around me. Um, one of my colleagues came uh, rushing along to see if I was okay and offered to drag me out. I politely refused. I said I was okay and called out myself. At six minutes past nine, as onlookers watched in horror, the second plane hit. Sautine C, wife of engineer Leslie Robertson and a partner with the firm, watched from the window overlooking the complex.
Well, after the first tower was hit, all of us were gathered around the windows on the north side looking towards the north tower, which was burning. And, um, and I was standing by this window with lots of other people in the office when uh, we saw the, this blue and red plane coming by and uh, smash into the uh, south tower. And uh, people thought it was a movie, but, you know, it was unreal. We were so stunned. Nobody believed that this was for real. In the weeks and months that have passed since that horrifying day, the complete set of plans and drawings that are kept in this office has been under intense scrutiny. These plans graphically illustrate why many in the building did not escape. These are the uh, architectural drawings of the World Trade Center North Tower, Tower A. And this is the 94th floor, which is very close to the uh, floors of impact on the North Tower. And the plane came in from the north side, so broad side onto the core. The core is from here to here and from there to there. If an outline of the aircraft is laid over the plans, the scale of the impact becomes clear. With a wingspan and length of 157 feet, the plane must have devastated the central core, destroying the escape routes at the same time. All means of escape were now blocked for those above the impact. The design that so ingeniously allowed the wide open floor spaces had also concentrated the elevators and staircases in the central core for almost everyone above floor 77 in the south tower or floor 91 in the north tower there was no way out i think i talking to some of the other people in our office um, when we first went into the stairwell, the people who investigated the stairwells looked up and they could see that the, the stairwells were blocked above us. There didn't seem to be, uh, and there's a lot of debris there and there was nobody coming down from, uh, from, from the floors above us. The elevator shafts were also severed by the planes and tons of aviation fuel poured into them, starting fires throughout the building. Elevator operator Kelly Badillo was in the North Tower when the first plane hit. I think uh, the, uh, one of the elevators, the lower ones, I think uh, they f the cable broke or something because they, um, they just came f flying down, sh boom. You could hear them. You could hear the rally elevators and then you could hear the wind, sh like a wind tunnel. But a lot of the elevators came crashing down. Doors flying right open, boom, hitting the other side of the wall and everything. Standing in the lobby, Kelly witnessed the destruction of the very system that had made the buildings possible in the first place. One of them came down and they hit the floor, or it hit halfway or something, and the doors, they, they, uh, one of them flew open, and then people started coming out that elevator, and they had their hair was on fire. You could see the smoke coming off their jackets and everything. And they just kept on running. Once they, kept, once they got out of the way, everybody just kept on running. Although few people survived from above the impact points, the fact that the buildings remained standing undoubtedly saved many lives. The fact that they were designed to resist over 13,000 tons of wind pressure meant they could not be knocked over. In a remarkably prescient interview given over 15 years ago, Charlie Thornton, one of the investigators, considered the scenario. Well, 13,000 tons is a lot of force. Uh, people always talk about an airplane crashing into a building. And in 1944 or 45, a plane did crash into the Empire State Building. Since the Empire State accident demonstrated that a plane could crash into a New York skyscraper, the designers were forced to consider the possibility, taking the example of a Boeing 707 passenger jet, one of a new generation of heavy civil aircraft.
airplane we were envisioning was the largest airplane of its time, uh, fly, flying slowly and low, lost in the fog. In any, in any event, we designed the buildings to take the impact of the Boeing 707 uh, hitting the building at any location. But the aircraft that hit the towers was a Boeing 767, heavier than a 707, fueled for a transcontinental flight and traveling fast. The energy uh, contained in, in, in an airplane or any other moving object is proportional to the square of the velocity, double the velocity, and you have four times the energy. And so the energy imposed on the building by the 767 was very substantially more than the energy that we had assumed in design. Although the impacts were far more powerful than what the engineers had envisioned, and the damage far more extensive than anything ever imagined, the towers did not fall. The enormous weight from above was supported by the columns on either side of the gaping hole. But the buildings were now stressed far beyond their design calculations, and the next phase of the tragedy would undo what little strength was left. It seems like only yesterday. When I started skating at eight years old, I never thought I'd experience the thrill of winning a medal. With all the great memories has come another thing I thought I'd never experience, the pain of osteoarthritis. Viox is here, a prescription medicine for osteoarthritis pain. With one little pill a day, Viox can provide powerful 24-hour relief. Viox specifically targets only the COX-2 enzyme, a key source of arthritis pain. People with allergic reactions such as asthma to aspirin or other arthritis medicines should not take Vioxx. In rare cases, serious stomach problems such as bleeding can occur without warning. Tell your doctor if you have liver or kidney problems. For more information, talk to your doctor about once daily Vioxx for the relief of osteoarthritis pain. Perhaps my biggest victory is to be able to plan my day around my life instead of my pain. Ask your doctor if Vioxx is right for you. Vioxx for everyday victories. Okay, let's do one year predictions. You first. I predict you'll be on the menu. Ooh, zinger, you got me. Come on. Dow, 5,000. NASDAQ, 800. Ooh, interesting. Wrong, but interesting. Get this. Dow, 25,000. NASDAQ, 8,000. Give or take a grand. Or 10. You know the difference between you and me? Yeah, common sense. No, you're a pessimist. Nobody likes a pessimist. Nobody likes a talking steak either. No matter which way you think the market will go, Ameritrade can give you an edge with a fast trading site and a 10 second guarantee. Qualified market trades that take longer than 10 seconds to execute are commission free. Limitations apply. Open a cash account with $1,000 and get 25 internet equity trades commission free. Go to Ameritrade.com. Hey, aren't you gonna leave us hip? Tipping is for cows. Human extremes. Human drama. Are you human? Coming up next on Junkyard Invasion Week. It's bridge building junkyard style as teams race to cross a mighty chasm. Could this be a bridge too far? Junkyard Invasion Week portable bridges coming up next on TLC.
your perfect beach. Beach Week, starting March 3rd at 8, only on the Travel Channel. Visit Aruba.com slash contest to win a trip for two to Aruba. Stay at the Aruba Sinesta Beach Resort, featuring Aruba's only private beaches. You'll fly U.S. Airways to Aruba with convenient connections via Charlotte. These were the biggest buildings in New York City. Each floor was one one acre in area, and we looking at we're looking at this, and we see uh, smoke issuing under pressure for at least the top 20 floors, maybe more. So you're looking at if we're using the 20 floor figure, you're looking at 20 acres of fire. Although the designers of the World Trade Center had considered the possibility of an aircraft impact, it seems no one had calculated the effects of the fuel on the structure. To the best of my knowledge, the considerations of the fuel in the airplane in terms of, a, of, a, of an explosion or a great fire was not considered. Now, we, we were not responsible for that aspect of the design, so I maybe I'm wrong, but I believe it was not considered, and further, I believe that had it been considered, it would have been proven to be impossible to, to deal with it. As thousands of gallons of aviation kerosene burned, hundreds of firefighters were dispatched to the scene, although in reality, the sheer scale and design of the buildings meant there was little they could do to save them. A typical firefighting hose team can extinguish approximately 2,500 square feet. That's an area 25 by 100. If you get two attack hose lines side by side, they may be able to extinguish about 5,000 square feet of fire. The World Trade Center floor areas were 40,000 square feet. They're building these high-rise office buildings with open floor design and creating spaces almost 10 times more than the area we can extinguish with hose streams. The way in which steel-framed buildings behave in fires depends on their construction. In this test, done by British Steel in 1995, a large amount of typical office furniture was burned to see what would happen to the heavy steel beams that supported the ceiling. When steel is bare, when it heats up, uh, it uh, gets weaker. It's not that it melts in a fire. In fact, uh, the fires, normal fires, are not hot enough to melt steel. Even if you were, for example, to uh, use an unusual uh, fuel like um, kerosene, you cannot achieve temperatures hot enough to melt steel. But what happens is it starts to lose its strength. And as it loses its strength, uh, it starts to sag. It, it becomes uh, softer and sags and can no longer support the load. This was the largest test of its kind ever conducted. It showed how unprotected steel can be distorted even by a normal office fire. But as is typical in steel buildings, the structural beams only slowly and progressively warped and sagged. There was no chance of a sudden collapse. In over 20 years, um, I have not seen, until recently, a protected steel structure that has collapsed in a fire. So what was the cause of the devastating, explosive failure that happened to the World Trade Center? How did such a massively strong steel building suddenly give way and come crashing down? Again. I didn't think I pulled a muscle yesterday. I'm too young to feel this way every morning. Do you suffer from back pain? Is your pain worse in the morning? If nagging back pain makes sleeping uncomfortable and mornings difficult, your inner spring mattress might just be the problem. A mattress spring cannot and is not capable of doing anything but imposing more pressure. You can put pain and discomfort behind you. 
Call now to learn more about the revolutionary Sleep Number Bed by Select Comfort. It's the only bed clinically proven to improve sleep quality and reduce back pain. Pressure map testing shows that sleeping on the wrong mattress can irritate, even cause back pain. But the comforting and adjustable air support of the Sleep Number Bed cushions your entire body, reducing uncomfortable pressure points and more properly aligning your spine. I wake up and my back feels Refresh, pain-free. I think if I didn't have the bed, I'd probably be going to a chiropractor all the time. Getting a better night's sleep couldn't be easier. Just use the handheld remote to set the comfort and firmness to your exact preference, your sleep number. Let your partner do the same. On a sleep number bed, each of you can change the firmness level anytime you'd like. In clinical studies conducted at Stanford and Duke Universities, participants fell asleep faster and experienced a better quality sleep on a sleep number bed. I can go to bed in pain and wake up free of pain. It's the only thing that works for me. The Sleep Number Bed costs about the same as an old-fashioned inner spring mattress. Yet in product abuse tests, the Sleep Number Bed is more than twice as durable. Don't suffer another night on an old-fashioned mattress. We're so sure the Sleep Number Bed can relieve your back pain, we guarantee it. Call 1-800-609-9100 for your free video and brochure. In it, will include complete details about this revolutionary bed and our 30-night in-home trial. Don't delay. Call 1-800-609-9100. That's 1-800-609-9100. Call now. Coming up next on Junkyard Invasion Week. It's bridge-building junkyard style as teams race to cross a mighty chasm. Could this be a bridge too far? <laughs> junkyard Invasion Week Portable Bridges coming up next on TLC. <laughs> Perfect Beach. Beach Week starts Sunday at 8, only on the Travel Channel. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I. 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 I am an American. I am an American. I am American. I am an American. I'm an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I am an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I am an American. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that actually it clasped like the way it did. Like everyone else, it was totally out of your human capacity to digest it and absorb it. Professor Hassan Astine is carrying out an analysis of the twisted remains that lie in the New Jersey scrapyard. He has been studying the condition of the steel columns in an attempt to find out what the collapse mechanism could have been. What you see here is actually very critical, very, very important. Perhaps this is the most important piece I have found so far. This piece comes from uh, most likely Tower 2, where the plane went in and exploded. This is the inside face of back columns. So plane went in, exploded right here, and the explosion hit this surface. What you see here is, first of all, a bend that is near to explosion. But more importantly, this is a signature of explosion here. This has happened due to explosive material hitting this column and, and making that bulge. So this is the floor where explosion happened. And the windows are blown away, everything is burned, even fireproofing on this floor is burned and glazed to the steel. The fireproofing in the World Trade Center was a sprayed on dry, fragile material made of mineral fibers. Designed to protect the steel from heat, it appears that the fireproofing may have actually been blown away by the blasts from the impacts. Although every piece of steel in this scrapyard was treated, very little of the coating can be found. This piece, as you can see, has been burned. 
you can see the smoke and the fire effect on it. You can see some fireproofing, but really not much of it is left. So you can see that when the building was burning, there was no fireproofing left. The lack of fireproofing meant that the steel was extremely vulnerable to the heat from the kerosene. But what has intrigued investigators above all is that it may have had a disastrous effect on one particular part of the structure, the support for the massive open plan floors. At the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Professor Eduardo Kausel has been carrying out research into the disaster. In retrospect, and we can always play uh, the general after the war, we can, we can see what went wrong and what you could have done differently. And uh, perhaps the, the Achilles tendon of the, of the World Trade Center is the way that the floors were supported with the columns. The, the connection between the floors and the columns. It was uh, in my view, uh, these were relatively weak connections. The floor system was unusual for its time. Instead of the thick steel beams that are normally used, the floors were supported with lightweight structures called trusses. A steel deck was placed over them to form prefabricated panels, which were then hoisted into position. They were fastened at each end to brackets welded to the wall. Once in place, each floor was covered with a four-inch layer of concrete. This system was one of the reasons the towers could be built so quickly, since each floor was largely pre-assembled down on the ground. But the drawback with such lightweight trusses is that they can be very susceptible to fire. There is no other construction technique that has killed more firefighters than trusses. We have a saying in the fire service, don't trust the truss. They fail during fire. For example, 40 years ago, the, the fire protection engineers told us that an unprotected steel truss will fail within five or 10 minutes of fire exposure. Trusses are highly efficient. They are extremely strong for their weight. But because they are so light, they heat up very quickly in a fire. And unless they are well protected with fireproofing, they will start to bend and distort. With the fireproofing damaged or removed completely, this was the first part to be affected by the inferno raging in the towers. This computer simulation done at MIT shows how heating the trusses causes them to fail. What this, this simulation shows is that the most likely, the weak point of the floor where the connections to the supports. And it might have started failing at, at those locations first. Either the external uh, connection to the columns or the internal connection. The heavily distorted brackets that remain in the scrapyard suggest exactly the same thing to Professor Astene. You cannot bend the steel like this without cracking it, unless you warm it up. So what, tells me, what this piece tells me is that this piece was very hot when the floor collapsed and bent it. So that must have been the initiation of collapse of this World Trade Center top. As the floors began to fail, the last terrible phase of the destruction started. The efficiency of the design meant that with any major element removed, the whole structure would fall. The reason why is best demonstrated with a simple wooden model. Um, we have here two uh, frame structures. Basically, these are the columns, and these are three floors. And I'm uh, certain that we had fires, and these fires uh, caused the, this floor basically to fail and drop onto the floors below, underneath. So once this floor was gone, we had a situation similar to this one here, where this intermediate floor disappeared, basically dropped. This changes dramatically the way in which the loads in the building are carried. 
Let me illustrate this by adding uh, weights here to the structure. And uh, this load again that I just added is transmitted through these columns all the way to the table. The important thing to understand is this floor does not carry any of this load. This, the only function of this floor is to connect the columns together, to tighten the columns together, and prevent them from buckling. The model on the left is able to take a very large amount of weight. But the one with the missing floor is only able to support a quarter of that amount before its columns twist and buckle, and it collapses. This is the mechanism that almost certainly caused the collapse of the World Trade Center, the fire destroying the floors that kept the walls standing. After burning for 53 minutes, the South Tower collapsed in 11 seconds. Thirty minutes later, the North Tower crumbled. Once it was in progress, nothing could stop it. By the time the tops of the buildings had fallen just the height of a single story, they had gathered enough momentum to smash each floor underneath accelerating until all 500,000 tons hit the ground at 120 miles an hour. The World Trade Center was an extraordinary building that faced an extraordinary and devastating terrorist attack. It now seems that its daring and innovative design hastened its tragic destruction. I'm, I'm a human being. I have, I have trouble sleeping, and I... It's very tough. It's very tough to be the structural engineer for a building that, that collapsed and killed a lot of people. It's very tough. We can only hope that from this tragedy will come a better understanding of how high-rise buildings react to fire. Also, that protection from terrorist attack will become a new and urgent priority. Coming up next on Junkyard Invasion Week. It's bridge building junkyard style as teams race to cross a mighty chasm. Could this be a bridge too far? <laughs> junkyard Invasion Week, portable bridges, tomorrow at 8, only on TLC. Sunday, he wrote one last letter to his wife as he drew his final breaths. Now it's a clue to a military mystery. The truth about this must be told. The Kursk Disaster at Sea, Sunday at 9 on TLC. You're watching Junker Invasion Week on TLC. Yeah! Kathy, wait! Oh, Tyler, you're such a gent. Thanks. What are you going to do about this one, then? Yeah. Welcome to Junkyard Wars, where our two teams of ingenious junketeers will be attempting to make mighty machines out of the trash that the rest of us throw away. At stake is a place in our semifinals. Our challengers must reach out and try and touch the other side. To get there, they must build a machine that's both a bridge and a vehicle capable of carrying all four team members. They must complete a course over rough terrain and bridge the waters of our Junkian swamp before racing to collect their team flag. Then they must cross the swamp for a second time. The team that manages to stay dry and cross the finish line first will be the winners. All the way from the Sunshine State are the mighty Miami Gearheads. They specialize in building low-rider cars. I'm Milton, I'm the captain of the Miami Gearheads. My teammates are Frank and Anthony, and we have the best team there is. Frank is the... Uh... 
Most of the team, it can be welding four days, non-stop. No food, no water, no good. My name is Frank. We're looking forward just to have plain fun. I mean, we're looking forward just to, like, kid around as much as we can and just make it happen. Anthony is a practical guy of the team. Hi, my name is Anthony. I'm part of the Miami Gearheads. I'm uh, from Venezuela. Frank is Cuban. Milton's from Puerto Rico. We got that Caribbean chemistry going on, and that's how we get along. I have the best team. That's it. We're, if we went to the show, we're going to win. We are the Miami Gearheads. And we're going back home with that trophy. Yeah. We're taking everybody out. Helping the gearheads shift up is Bill Harris, an engineering egghead who advises the Pentagon on everything from electric vehicles to bridging machines. Ready. Ready. Let's do it. Their opponents come from the opposite end of North America. The crafty Canadian junkies are three cool cats from Calgary. I'm Gary Heald. I'm 34 years old. I'm Kevin Meehan. This is my yarn. Welcome to it. I'm Mike Garrett. I'm 38 years old. I uh, am a junk -amolic. These are ski bikes that we built one Saturday afternoon. And Snow here in Canada is phenomenal, but you got to watch out for the polar bears. Now, there isn't a challenge that we're not up to. Let's go grab some stuff, guys. Riding in to help the junkies is battling bridger Richard Hunt. He specializes in emergency repairs to bridges damaged by earthquakes and floods. Okay, junkies, let's get it on. Canadian junkies, yeah. Miami gearheads. Yeah. The challenge I set before you today is the ultimate leap of faith. I'm going to stretch you to your limits, and you'll have to carry yourselves over some troubled waters. Build me the ultimate mobile bridging machine. Yeah. 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 OK, you know the rest of the rules. You'll have just 10 hours to build your machines, starting from when the junkyard gonger gongs its gong. Are you ready? Yeah! Go! Go! In World War II, the Allied forces had to build temporary bridges to keep their tanks advancing fast. But by the time of the Vietnam War, mobile bridging machines made from converted tanks were carrying specially designed scissor-style bridges. Modern bridging machines launch their bridges horizontally, and of course, none of them are made out of junk. Pivot from the, the vehicle. Before our teams can build their machines, they must first devise a plan. Whatever we find out there is going to really control how we build it. What I propose is we build a lightweight trailer bridge. We'll take a lightweight vehicle, we'll have the trailer. We build, we'll build the lightweight trailer. The junkie's plan is to build a simple bridge and then mount it on two axles. They'll tow it to the gap and then, using a jack mounted on the front of the vehicle, they'll crank down one end of the bridge, which will lever up the opposite end. The vehicle will then push the bridge into position, unhook and drive across, before repeating the process to pull the bridge over on the other side. Is this a race? It's a... Oh, yes. It's a race. Is there anything in here? Uh, like water? That's, 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 it's I hear there's water and sharks. The bridge needs to deploy itself. You need to cross it. It needs to pick itself up. Okay. okay. The way I want to start thinking about it is we want to have a bridge that hinges. Bill's plan is to carry the gearheads bridge on the back of a vehicle. It will be hinged in the middle and they'll use a system of winches to extend their scissor bridge over the gap. Once across, they'll winch the bridge back on board and carry on their merry way. It's a very ambitious and difficult plan. Does it have to be a bridge that does this? Does I mean, if we don't find anything like that, that, that right. does that, it can be a straight. Right. We put a bridge that we basically throw on top of a small car. That's right. We That's could right. actually throw it down and assemble it, okay. and then we could drive now, the car on it. Now, the question is, how do you pick it up? Okay. That's the critical part. We need trailer, jacks, wheels. I think uh, those would be key things. Any, can you think Platform, of anything, Richard? Pipes. The vehicle. Vehicle. Eyes out for a vehicle. Let's go get them, boys. Good luck. Good hunting. Let's go, guys. The race is on to find the best materials. 
So our first Canadian American challenge. I know. Let's hope it doesn't get ugly. Uh, it may. It may. <laughs> but you're from Canada. Uh, I'm not answering that question. Not at this time. It might incriminate me. Beams, pipes, vehicles, everything is up for grabs. So, will the teams be beaming over their discoveries, or will they just come up short? You'll have to stick around to find out. We had to build a bridge on the first show. The expert comes with an idea, it takes him two months to build a bridge. We need to build a bridge in 10 hours. So we have to change the plans. Sometimes, most of the times, we change the expert's plans. It's a competition. It's not a, uh, who builds a beautiful bridge, you know? This TLC program is sponsored in part by We Never Stop Working For You. Can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? Good. Imagine you if now? you could use all your minutes across right. America. Introducing America's Choice. It's a new plan from Verizon Wireless, where every minute has no roaming or long distance charges anywhere on the America's Choice network. Sign up now and get 3,000 bonus national night and weekend minutes for life. Can you hear me now? Good. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Free lube oil and filter with the purchase and installation of VST brakes. You'd be crazy to pass on this deal. If you see two sheep mowing the lawn, you're crazy. Midas. We do that. Mike, let's take a look at those reports next Thursday. And Tom, Susan, set up a meeting on Monday. Any other thoughts? Uh, you know, sir, instead of saving money by having only one office pen, we could just go to Staples. Yeah, with Staples 365 Savings, they compare prices and back it up with a 110% price match guarantee. That's sharp thinking. Hey, client's here. We uh, need the pen. Low prices on every item, every day. Staples 365 Savings. Yeah, we've got that. Men are so young, and I look at them, I see our boys. Oh, you're just the man to lead them. The lives of many will depend on the courage of a few. Mel Gibson. Those are my men out there, and I'm going in to get them. We were soldiers. Rated R. This Friday in theaters everywhere. American Honda. Hi. Um, the light that says thanks came on in my accord. Do you know what it's about? We just wanted to say thanks for your confidence in Honda and for helping make the Accord the best selling car in America. Oh, you're welcome. TLC brings the past to life in a brand new special. A group of experts recreates an ingenious invention, the world's first wooden submarine, using only original materials. The worst case scenario, the massive failure in the timber planking. The challenge requires teamwork. What a decision still to be made. Know-how. I bloody well don't want it to sink to the bottom. And nerves of steel. No steering, no power. It's terrifying. Building the impossible, the first submarine, Monday at 10 on TLC. Your for years, you've put them on and put them in and waited for something better to help you see. The wait is over. World-class laser vision correction with Dr. Daniel Goldberg. Dr. Goldberg is the first in New Jersey to use the VizX wave print technology to customize your LASIK treatment. Call Dr. Goldberg today to find out more and to schedule your free consultation. 888-395-EYES. The gus elephant, the platypussy cat. The race to create such magnificent animal hybrids is extremely competitive. But ever since 2001, we've had a technological edge, a fiber optic communications network from LightPath. It allows us to share vast amounts of data with our research partners faster and more securely. And that's led to our greatest success. The golden retriever. Thank you, LightPath. <laughs> Welcome back to Junkyard Wars, where the Canadian junkies and the Miami gearheads are locked in cross-border conflict in a battle to build a bridging machine. The gearheads have staked their first claim, a big, heavy van that runs. It's ideal because they plan to hang a large military-style scissor bridge off the back of it. 
By contrast, the Canadian junkies will be towing a lightweight trailer bridge that they'll lever over the gap. Keeping the weight down is crucial, and Kevin's trying to lighten the load even further. Gearheads Captain Milton and expert Bill are waiting impatiently in their workshop. Out in the yard, Frank and Anthony are grabbing everything in sight. Bill and me were doing nothing here. Just bring something, bring, bring the band, and then, you know, go back. The Canadian guys are blocking us with their buggy. Run them over. Hey, or pull it away. Junkies Gary and Richard aren't convinced that this trailer will make the perfect bridge. Oh, see, the tongue's no good. Yeah, it's got some major damage. The whole thing's damaged. You're so frisky in here. You don't waste a moment. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell me about your plan. Our plan is basically to make a, a, a trailered bridge. The junkies plan to mount their bridge on wheels and tow it to the gap. They'll then turn the car round, and with the jack mounted on the heavy end of the car, they'll crank down to lever the far end of the bridge up. The bridge will then be pushed into position and drop down across the gap. Then they'll unhook, race across, and repeat the procedure on the other side. Why have you gone for this particular option? What, what, why is this going to make you win? I presume you're intent on winning. Oh, yes, totally. Uh, because uh, our expert, Richard, you know, uh, we have 100% uh, confidence in him. And, really? And so have you built something like this before? Uh, never. Good. There's a very good reason for having so much confidence. <laughs> but you think lightweight is going to be the winning solution? Uh, I think so. I'm quietly so. confident. And what do you think of your team, the, the Canadian junkies? Are they performing Got to hold so them well? back. <laughs> <laughs> They're ready to go. <laughs> we'll see how you get on. You can have this tool back. Thank you very I'll much. I'll catch up with you shortly. Awesome. Good luck. Boys aren't really grabbing the, the right stuff. No. You guys, we need like 20 feet. Captain Gary isn't too happy with his scrounger's finds. They've unearthed nothing to make a bridge from, and Kevin's latest discovery would barely get them over a puddle. Bill and Milton start stripping the gearhead's van. Out in the sea of junk, Frank is on the prowl. Hey, what about this winch? I got a winch here. On the energy level really high over here on the uh, Miami Gearhead side. What are you working on here? We're building some kind of, uh, what is it called, the portable? It's like a scissor bridge. A scissor bridge. Okay. <laughs> Don't even know what it's called, but we're building it. <laughs> the Gearhead's complicated plan is to mount a military-style scissor bridge on the back of their van. Hinged in the middle, a system of winches and cables will extend it out over the gap. They'll then... Come in. <laughs> 